All right, welcome back. We are at video number five. And we left off working on eyebrows. I realized that some of those shots were a bit farther away, so I zoomed in a little bit. Let's, let's make this eyebrow like the other one. What we're gonna do is undercut, and then we'll remove some of this wood to give that eyebrow a little bit of shape. Don't need a whole lot, but we need some. Do like we did on that other one around the harsh edges. Go back to our small gouge. Just take some of that wood off in the middle. Okay. Trim this up a little bit right in here. Give it a little bit more of a shape. Almost like it's going back up under that hat. All right, we've got... Let me zoom in just a little bit more here. We've got that indentation we made up under the eyebrow. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our Helvy knife and get back up under there. And I'm going to lay it down. And what I want to do is I want to get back up under that indentation right there. That Take that knife. Follow that line around. What this is going to do is give me a chance to just shape that eyebrow, that eyelid, sorry. We want it to go deep into there. So you can see how we got back in there. We'll do the same thing to the other side. Lay it down flat. Follow the contour of that Sorry, of that line that we cut up under there. And then we'll come back and we'll just relieve a little bit of that wood and relieve and give it some shadows. So now you see how it's, it goes up under there and that will give us an opportunity to really make those eyeballs stand out. Okay, typical eyeball. We start with a deep cut in the tear duct. And really, I say deep is deep comparatively to what you're carving. It's in there probably about a 16th to an 18th of an inch. And then as we go across the bottom of the eyelid, we pull the knife almost out, lay it flat just to make a cut. And then we're going to make that cut push in there as well. So we've got a deep cut in here and a slightly less deep cut in here. And then what we're going to do is then we're going to try to make those, those lines match. So we've got our line here for the top eyelid. And what I want to do is I want to cut and curve this out just a little bit. And I want to cut down deep into that inside of that eye. So I'm not real deep, but a little deep. And then I'm going to come up. And then I'm going to go down and hopefully those two cut lines will match. So what that allows me to do then is to take a chip out here and a chip out here. And so when I remove that, I like to do the, first, the, the one on the inside first. The one in the tear duct. And this may be a little hard to see with the camera, but I'll try to get it up there. And we've got pretty deep in that eye, back in that eye socket, or that tear duct down in there. Got a chip out there. We've got a chip out of this corner of the eye. And then what we're going to do is just take a little sliver of, not, of up under the eyeball, because I don't want to make it, make that eyelid stick out too far. But I do want it, I do want it to, to, to be there. I want, you want it to be indented. 
Now here's what I see on a lot of carvings that people don't take care of. I've left a high point right here. And so essentially that eye is rounding up under there and it's rounding this way. So it's rounding this way and it's rounding this way. So you've got to approximate that. So take off that, that flat edge right there. Maybe you can see it. I'll see if I can get it a little bit closer. I'm going to take off that flat edge so it doesn't have a, a jagged edge on the eyeball. And so now you can see that's rounded down in there and it's rounded out here. Now all I want to do is tuck that eyelid under the bottom eyelid under the top. Look at eyes and what you'll see is the top eyelid comes down over the bottom. So what we're going to do is make a cut and relieve that up to it. I don't need to take out much, but I need to take out enough so that the eyelids look like they overlap. One overlaps the other. If you haven't by now rounded this eye, whatever rounding you need to do, piddle, play, or putt, or whatever you got to do to round that eye, but make sure that that eye is going to look rounded. Because when you go to paint, any, any paint on those edges will stand out. Okay? Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that cut that we made right here, and I want to make it deeper. What I want is an indentation back in that corner of that eye. So see that little chip that came out? It allowed me to get deeper into that eye and it gives it more of a rounded feature. Now I'm going to do the same thing I just did here. I'm going to do it over here. Let me clean up a little bit because of you, you know me, you don't, I don't like a lot of fuzzy sticking out of there because it's a lot of stuff I've got to clean up. Let's see if we can get a close-up of that eye. Get that up as close as I can get it. And you get an idea of what that eye looks like. We've got it deep in there. We've got it rounded. We've got the upper eyelid over top of the bottom eyelid and all the other details that we're going to add to it later in terms of a bag and whatever. We'll worry about that. Okay, let's do that with the same. I'll go through this a little faster. Deep in the corner where the tear duct is, pull it out, lay it flat, a little deep there. Follow the lines that I drew. Take out the chip in the corner. This will be the deepest chip you'll take out of this eye. Take out a, deep, a, a little slightly deeper chip, not slightly deeper, less deep out in the corner. And then I'm going to cut down to the bottom eyelid and round up to the upper eyelid. And again, eyes are not that hard to carve if you know what you're supposed to do. You've got to remember round. You've got to remember you don't need to cut out a real deep piece up here for the top eyelid. You need to round. You need to take off all these harsh edges. If you've got, if you've got hard lines on there, you want to take those off because it may look okay in the wood. When you go to paint it, it doesn't look quite that good. Out to the end, we're going to... indent the up the uh, lower eyelid under the upper eyelid so you see where we're trying to go that's what we're doing all right i could sit here and puddle play and putter with all the, with all the cleanups but we'll worry about that a little bit later let's work on this nose you can see it's got a squarish end here i'm going to just take that square square line, square edge, not an end. I'm just going to take my knife and I'm just going to trim that that harsh line and, and move it down. I'm just rounding the, the, the nose is all I'm doing just to give it a little more of a shape. Okay, now I don't know about you but I like a big nose on my Santa Claus and that looks like a big nose although it's still got some points on the top that I don't really like. 
So we'll trim those off a little bit. We've got a fairly good sized mustache going on. And so we're going to play around with that and we're going to play around with the setting of the mustache. So back down to our mark. We've got our center line here. And now you have to determine what kind of mustache do you want. So essentially, somewhere right around here is where the bottom of the mustache should be. And so if you want a mustache that comes out like this, you can do that. Bring out the mustache that matches. You can certainly do that. It is not my favorite one, but I've done a few like that. I'm going to erase that off because that's not really what I want. What we want is for this, his smile to match here. In a perfect world, the mustache comes right under the nose, not up here. And it follows the cheekbone if that's the way you, you shave. But in reality, for me, mustache follows this line here. It just makes it look better. So I give it a little bit of a dip here. And to me, that makes him smile more. To me, that looks like a smile. Sorry, didn't mean to get off screen. To me, that looks more like a smile than the other one. So how far up you take this is entirely up to you. You can certainly cut it off and do this. Bring him over here like this. And then your, your, your mustache lines will run somewhat like this. If you can see that. So they run like that, following the flow of the face, where your beard, your beard lines are going to, however you want to make them do that. And then if you want a mouth, you can certainly give them a wide mouth, a narrow mouth, a ho-ho mouth, a smile. You, you determine what you want to do on that. And so what that means is that you get you have to determine what to do with this high arch right here. So I'm going to pull that straight down because I didn't like it pointed, so I want to round it. What that looks like when you do it looks like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do if I if you like that once you've drawn it in, if that's what you like. I like to outline with a V-tool, so I'm going to grab my, my Drake V-tool here, and I'm just going to outline the mustache. Make sure these lines match up, because if you don't, you've got a droopy mustache on one side and a high one on the other, and this doesn't always, always look good when you do it that way. Okay. I like that. I like that mustache. So what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to match that and make it come over. And I'm going to do that here as well. I'm going to make that come over. And that's where my mustache is going to fit on that face. Okay. So now I'm going to take a knife. And I'm just going to underscore that or stop cut. And if you like that where it's at, you take a knife and just I'll take a thicker, heavier knife. And I'm just going to follow that around and take that slice slice cut that out to separate the mustache from the beard
Okay, if you want a mouth, now's the time to put that in. And so we'll just, it's entirely up to you what that mouth looks like. I don't like a great big lip because it takes a lot of the bottom of the chin and all that, but that one looks okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a stop cut here, stop cut there, and then I'm going to cut to it up here. So I'm going to go in on one side of the mustache and make a, a fairly deep stop, stop cut along one side of the mustache. I'll pull it back out and I'll do the same thing to the other one. Make a stop cut right in there. And then I'm going to nibble it away. Take a little bit out. Does that look okay? A little bit more. And if you have to undercut that a little bit more, that's entirely up to you, but you'll have an opportunity to do that as you do more carbon on your car, on your, on your piece. So there's the mouth. Let's, let's do the, the, the bottom lip. I'll just outline that with a, with a gouge. I got my small number nine gouge from Drake. And then what we'll do is I will make a small cut away from the lip down towards the chin so that when I cut up to it, I'm not taking out the, 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 the lip. A little bit at a time, nibble that lip away. Take off the, the sharp edges because I don't know many people that have a sharp edge lip. Maybe somebody does. I haven't met them yet if they are. Okay. You get an idea of what that looks like. I'm going to undercut the mustache a little bit more because it doesn't look like there's anything there. And I want to make it look like it's a void back in there. I don't want you to be able to see. Yeah. Round that mustache a little bit more up to the nose. the way he's looking. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of start to shape the beard. And I'm, what I'm doing mostly is removing cut lines and marks that I've made on it. Drawing marks. Just the things that I don't want on there as I, as I head towards the finish line. And I don't know what that indentation there is. We'll, we'll end up cutting that out, but it's just a piece that was starting to bother me. And all we're doing is just shaping things up a little bit. Trying to remove some of the original cut lines and just remove the draw lines that we put on there. We'll shape the beard a little bit, a little bit later. We're at 19 minutes on this video. I'm trying to keep them to about 20. What we're going to do is just shape that that beard a little bit. Okay, you'll have to figure out what you want to do on the bottom. If you're going to continue the lines all the way around on this bandsaw mark here. But I'm just trying to remove that and leave a little bit of space there. Okay. Every carver has their own way for cleaning up messes or fuzzies, and every one of us have our own way of doing it. But anyway, that's where we're at here at the end of the video number five, and we'll uh, see you in video number six. Thanks for watching.